Carmen Bradford. I am so honored to be asked by the great Philly Pops to chat about the legendary First Lady of Song, Ms. Ella Fitzgerald. I, met, I first met her um, in Neiman Marcus department store. My mother and I were shopping there on a Sunday. We were in the perfume department and so was she. And so we approached her and my mother had met her over the years. My mother's a singer too. Her name is Melba Joyce. So my mom had met her and so we said hello. And she said, hi baby, to me and touched my face like that. We didn't talk long. We just talked for a few minutes and she went on about her business. And then I met her again when I was about 15 in Neiman Marcus, in Beverly Hills, in the perfume department, I swear to God. Then I met her again when I was about, oh, maybe 19, also in Nemitz, in the perfume department, right? Is that crazy? Then I met her again after I got the job, after Mr. Basie hired me to be the new vocalist with the Count Basie Orchestra, and I, I, it was in Nemitz again. I approached her and I said, Miss Ella, I know you don't remember me. We met. Uh, have met over the years here in this perfume department. She said, oh yeah, baby, I remember you. I don't think she did. But uh, I said, well, I just got the job as a new vocalist with the Count Basie Orchestra. And she said, oh baby, that's so wonderful. Now don't eat a lot on the road. <laughs> you know, I was the last vocalist that Count Basie hired uh, before he passed away in I started with the band uh, in 1983, and um, I think just the thought of following in the footsteps of that kind of greatness, uh, standing on the shoulders of Ella Fitzgerald, what she means to me as a musician is the responsibility to get it right. She is the only example um, when it comes to singing big band music, which I do mostly, she is the epitome of how it should be done. She is the standard, and she's been my example, and my friend, and I swing because of her. That, that, that's what she does for me. She's the standard, and I check myself when it comes to her. Um, I recorded Mr. Paganini in tribute to Ella Fitzgerald on uh, one of my CDs and my manager um, made sure that she got a copy and I was told that she absolutely loved it and uh, about eight months, I'm going to say seven or eight months after she passed away, I had gone to Catalina's Jazz Club to hear the great jazz vocalist Carmen Lundy. and. Uh, the next morning, Carmen called me and said, hey, Carmen, I said, hi, how are you? And she said, I'm good. I need you to meet me at Ella's house this morning. And I said, Ella who? Because a lot of time had passed, you know, several months. She said, Fitzgerald. And I said, oh, well, what's going on? She said, just get dressed right now and meet me at Ella's house. I said, okay. She said, no, really, right now. I said, okay, I'm on my way. So I got in my car and drove to Ella's house, which was not that far from me. Um, it was in Beverly Hills, beautiful old Hollywood mansion. Uh, I got to the front door and it was ajar and nobody answered as I continued to knock, so I walked on in and um, when I leaned my head to the left, I could hear voices and I leaned uh, stepping into the foyer and there were women in her kitchen arguing over Crystal and China and there were some furs on her, her dining room table. Her dining room was to the left of, of me. And I thought, what is this, you know? And then it came to me that this was the estate sale. And there was Carmen waiting for me at the bottom of this beautiful, this beautiful staircase. And she reached her hand out for, for me. And I took her hand and she led me upstairs to Ella's bedroom. And uh, I entered Ella's bedroom and um, the bed had been stripped, of course, and there were a few empty perfume bottles on the dresser. And then Carmen pointed like this for me to, to look and follow her finger. And on Ella's bedside table uh, was my CD jewel case to the CD that I paid tribute to her on, on singing Mr. Paganini. 
And inside this tiny boom box that was also the only other thing on the table, my CD was inside. And so when I saw that, oh my goodness, I fell out on her bed and I cried probably for about 10 minutes. And then Carmen said, okay, sit up, sit up. Let's take all of this in. Let's realize whose bed we're sitting on. And let's think about the fact that the first lady of song, our hero, Shiro, uh, was listening to you at the end of her life. It changed my life from that point on. And uh, I think I kind of rededicated my life to jazz and um, it became really important for me to be the next example, paying tribute to jazz music and, and reaching for excellence and sitting on the bed of, of the first lady of song. Miss Ella Fitzgerald, and uh, it was it was quite moving, and something I will never forget. The concert was over in Carnegie Hall. The maestro took bow after bow. He said, "My dear friends, I have given my all. I'm sorry, it's all over now." When from the balcony, way up high, there suddenly came a mournful cry. Oh, Mr. Paganini, please play my rhapsody. And if you cannot play it, won't you sing it? And if you can't sing it, you'll simply have to. Fum de dee do dee, wooden do dee ah. Ooh, dee ah, dee ah, dee ah, dee ah, Mr. Paganini.